we truly live in a glorious time when it comes to the handling of the law, don't we? Once, long ago, nearly all matters of law were dealt with by the leading ruler or his direct subordinates. But in such dark days, could you really say that every leading noble lord or lady was actually fully versed in the law? Well, of course not. No, as we progress to a more civil time, it is very important that those who are in charge of punishing those who break the law, well, that they actually know the law themselves. Hence, today, we start from the high judge themselves and have the court of the magistrates and the lawyers assigned to the defense of those who, well, need defending. Of course, not everyone can afford a lawyer, but in such cases, well, the judge themselves are normally more than qualified of handing out the punishment needed, and justice is served. Perhaps it's not a perfect system, but it certainly works well enough for those who it really needs to work for, so... Well, who am I to judge? This is Red Moon role-playing. It is now roughly the middle of the day. The Schaffenfest Festival once again in full swing, the town of Bogenhafen filled with happy civilians, joy, laughter, and merriment. But for free people, the situation isn't quite so funny. Siegfrieda, Heinrich, and Kruger, you are standing outside a building in the south district of town, quite near the central areas, the town hall and all that, and also actually not too far from that area that seems to have an awful lot of really big buildings in it. You are standing outside a squat two-story building, two big doors on the front, plenty of windows, and even though you can't read it, Heinrich and Kruger, Siegfried will inform you that there is a sign on the outside, big barrel with an S on it, and written underneath, Steinhager Offices. It is where you are. Why are you here? Well, according to Heinrich's surprisingly good navigation skills, he was able to roughly deduce, roughly, where he thought the room you found in the sewers would be situated above ground, near this building, or rather underneath this current building. You've come here because you are looking for clues. You are desperate to find some. After all, no one currently seems to believe you when they, when you tell them that you saw something very unpleasant in the sewers. A ritualistic chamber and a demon. These things are very, very bad. But the issue is, sometimes, if you don't have proof, people don't want to believe in these sort of things. It's fine believing that demons are ravaging the north thousands of miles away, but finding out that the demons are right under your house is something people just don't want to know, and they tend to be very resistant to it. You tried your luck with the Magister. He did kind of believe you, after some duress. But then, the guards he sent with you to investigate the scene found nothing. Most of those guards left, but one of them stayed to help. An old guard, apparently called Conrad who as fate would have it, apparently, was your father, Siegfrieda. This one old alcoholic guard seems to be willing to help, but that's about it. You have, of course, made your reports, and you have no reason to believe that Magistrate Richter is not currently in the town hall discussing these things, but for now, the three of you are standing here outside this building. What do you do? Well, having completed the gross exercise of trigonometry that is trying to count the correct number of steps, do a, a little bit of, of fuzzy river math, you know, oh, the trail wanders this far to the left and this far to the right, but we've only gone this far actually down the river, kind of trying to transplant that information, finally arriving to what I am I am certain is the building that is over the chamber, or at least very uh, adjacent the chamber. I'd known in advance that we were going to arrive in a, in a slightly more mercantile part of town. I didn't expect it to be a building like this. So, to whatever degree they've been following behind my uh, very sleuth-like steps, I will just stop, maybe in the middle of the street, look up to the top of the building, take off my hat, scratch my head, and say, Huh. How about that? I will join you standing next to you and looking at the building as well. 
So that's... That's where it leads? I'm... I'm pretty sure. No, I'm definitely sure. Then the question is, how do we get in? And I look to Siegfrieda. What do you think? Well, I'm... I'm no master thief. <laughs> and I do think that our... Negotiation skills have proven to be somewhat rough around the edges. But there's no point just charging in and cutting people down either. So I'm weighing up our options. I think the question is how much do we feel is of the essence time-wise here? Do we believe there is a an imminent threat? Because if so, then breaking in in the middle of the day may be our better option, or despite the risks that will come with it. If uh, we believe we have time on our side, we could wait until nightfall. Uh, the good news is we now have a friend among the guards who could perhaps, even if we don't avail him of all of the information, make sure that there are no guards patrolling when we try such an act. It is worth noting at this point, as you're thinking this, you are currently standing on a street. It's not a side street, it's a main public thoroughfare. There are several people currently walking back and forth said street, and of course the building does seem to be guarded. You see two members of the watch currently standing behind two doors. They're not looking particularly infused with their work. They're standing quite idly by. This building obviously has some importance. I eye the building and I try to make some kind of determination around just how well guarded is this place, actually. Um, we'd have to assume that, that there will be guard during the night as well, although it might perhaps be reduced. Who knows? But given what I can see in terms of entrances and windows, ways of climbing up, what do I think? Is this a place that I could break into? Would you like to make a roll for that? What would you like to roll? What do you think would be appropriate? Yes, that's a good question. Would that be something like perception? I mean, I have things like... Uh, stealth, urban... I think I'm thinking perception, unless there's anything you think is better or more suited, or reflects your talents. No, I, I think that that makes sense. Let's do perception then. In that case, roll perception. It's going to have no modifiers. 36, there's one degree of success. You do your best to sort of stroll around the building, trying not to look too suspicious. Again, it is the middle of the day. Two stories, ground floor, second floor. There are windows on the second floor. They have shutters outside. Those shutters probably would be closed at night, but... You might be able to get through, although you do notice they seem to be made of metal, they're not wood. This seems like quite a squat, quite secure building. If you were going to do it, yes, night would be the time to do it. There definitely would be less guards here. Again, these are the Watch. They're probably here as part of civil service or something. Again, didn't Siegfried say that this is one of the main merchant families of the town? Isn't the town run by the merchants? Pretty much. So, of course, the watch would largely be supporting them. But there would be less people at night, you think? After all, is this some sort of office? Offices are normally closed at night. Normally there aren't people in them, so less need for guards. Indeed. Well, the night definitely would suit us better. But if I did go at night, if we assume that the door would still be guarded or at least watched then it would mean trying to break through those windows even though they have shutters or do i see any back door that might not be guarded or is not guarded now even it would definitely be scaling the walls but again if you've got some good rope maybe if someone made a distraction as well if there is some guards late at night they could always be distracted somehow or temporarily waylaid and then that would give you an opening Again, getting those shutters open is going to be tricky, but you do know how to do that. So, less tricky for you than the others, at least. I will uh, finish my study of the building, and I will return to Siegfried and Heinrich. 
you'd also finally notice that it is an occupied building. You even can see some people moving around past a window. So there are people there right now, just working, you assume? Well, before we go ahead and plan some extravagant heist, I say to my two companions, what are we aiming to find evidence of some cultist activity, uh, the, this creature prowling around, which I imagine won't be the case as it seems to materialize from thin air and dust. I guess, I, while I'm not opposed to us taking the step to essentially prove our, well, not only our innocence, but prove our discovery, and then hopefully earn some favor from, from the watch, from the merchant skills, from whoever because we obviously have people out looking for us. There's one of us, anyway. We... We do need to know what it is we are aiming for. That's true. I think what, what we know is that the tracks lead here, and whatever creature has been called forth here, or whatever kind of cult is operating here, if there would be proof, there might... It might be inside this building, and were we to find that, that would certainly help make our case. It might make the magistrate actually move on this building and actually be able to stop the cult. I don't think we can do that by ourselves, necessarily. No, uh, no, I agree. And uh, I, I apologize if this is uh, as uncouth as we discuss it, but I, I presume there would also be a hefty reward for information leading to the defeat of the forces of chaos inside the city? Well, by the gods, I hope so. We're in need of a hefty reward. Yes, those 20,000 gold pieces, they, um, they're no longer a thing. So, yes, that, that, would be, that would be good. And also, we get to save a lot of people. Uh, do the honorable thing and, and all that. that. That feels good, right? Look at us, a band of mercenary do-gooders. And I'll clap them both on the shoulder, each with one hand. No, I have said. I have said before. We do need to act with some degree of honor. If we if we have the knowledge and the ability, dare I say it, of actually affecting good change, then then we should put that into practice. One thing I'll throw in for free, Kruger, being the man you are, is it's always sometimes a little easier to heist buildings when you actually know what they look like inside. Just a thought that occurs to you. Hmm. Yes, we could do some kind of um, scouting, um, some kind of casing of the place beforehand. I mean, there's legitimate business going on there, certainly, right? So perhaps we can just pose as, well, um, potential clients, something like that. I, I'm sorry, I might have missed this, and this is Heinrich speaking in confusion, but... Was I here for the part where one of you told me what this building actually is and does? Well, well uh, it's it's the... My understanding is that this is one of the wealthiest merchant families in the town. Uh, therefore, while we're seeing City Watch defending it, we cannot exclude the possibility that they're going to have private guards when the City Watch are not on duty. Uh, but... It, in my limited experience, friends, I I have often found that it is the wealthiest and most powerful who are the most prone to corruption and endeavouring into chaotic practices such as the things we've witnessed. Admittedly, my, my experience is through reading books. It's not through actually dealing with these people. Though. But if literature is to be believed... And I am firmly of the opinion that you would not write something down unless there was a grain of truth to it. Then we are probably looking at the heart of a great conspiracy. Right. Well, we had better wait for the night. Um, I can procure the materials required in terms of rope and... Uh, I suppose I'd need to have tools to break in. Uh, crowbar and the like I do have actually already, so... I think it's just about the materials needed to scale the walls and to, to be able to get up there. I, I should be able to get inside, and then you could climb up to the window, surely, right? 
I look to Siegfrieda and Heinrich. Would, would you be able to do that? Well, I, I, climbing is not really within my skill set, but I can venture in now in under the auspices of doing business just to scout the place out. I, I, I feel like the my best role here is, yes, while I can certainly climb a ladder without any difficulty, doing things like keeping watch uh, is... Is more my more my skill set. Oh, went so well last time. So why don't we try the same again? My, myself and Heinrich will enter the premises. You will keep watch outside and make sure that we don't get ambushed. Well, in fairness, I did try to lead the ambushers away. I just didn't know that. I'm sorry. I'm I'm taking it personally. I realized that the, our last operation didn't go entirely to plan. Well. We're still alive, so there's that, at least. And it, there was a lot going on. I'm, I'm, I'm not blaming you, Siegfrieda. Uh, don't worry. Besides, nothing we've done so far has gone according to plan. It's our resilience after the fact that makes us special. Indeed. Well, in that case, what is the next immediate action? Siegfrieda, are you going to try and now gain access to the building on the auspices of business or are you going to do that later let's do that now let's see what we can uh, achieve through my usual charm and grace would Siegfrieda, would you be able to d present yourself as as a, as a medical mer merchant is there some kind of licensing requirement I, you you have that letter right I, do you need a permit to import herb of grow leg back into the city some I'm, I'm just spitballing here the answer to that Siegfrieda is yes you definitely do there is a physician's guild and it's high time that I sought sponsorship to join as my apprenticeship must by any good measure be close to its end given that I have no master anymore so perhaps that is the best way to go I'll try that very well Siegfrieda you step forwards, step towards the doors, and a, the watchman looks down at you. Uh, yes, ma'am, business? Uh, yes, business with the uh, people inside. What's the business? Guild business. Which guild? I'm sorry, are you a guild member or a watchman? Well, in that case, Siegfrieda, could you please roll an intimidate check? Give yourself a plus ten. Well, that's still a failure, uh, so I'm going to spend uh, one of my fortune and uh, roll again. Uh, second time is more fortunate, appropriately enough. I mean, it's uh, by a marginal degree of success. Uh, with the plus ten, I have 37. I rolled a 35 out of 37. In that case, this man gives you a very heavy scowl, shakes his head and just says, Whatever. And moves to open the door. Looking in, you see a lavish hallway on the ground. A sort of carpet. The carpet has the symbol of the twin-tailed comet. Which is, of course, one of the most popular symbols of Sigma himself. There is a whole bunch of doors leading to the left and right. And a big, large desk with a elderly lady fixed spectacles, kind of writing something in a journal. Well, as I recall, three of us are dressed in our finest, as we were intending on dressing well to meet with the magistrate. Uh, so, at least I look the part. Indeed. Also, feel free to roll a intelligence check here. Just a standard one. That's much better. I get an 11 out of 48. As you step in, you, of course, realise that this is a merchant's office. What's the Steinheiger... What do they do again? You do seem to remember in your studies reading about it. I mean, it was a bit boring. They... You think they have a connection with the Grey Mountain Dwarves. Mining and good transportation. They also own a couple of the wharves in town. So that's what they do. It occurs to you that while you could approach this as a member of the Physician's Guild... Is that the best way to approach it? It might be better to approach it more as you are someone who wants something transported or is interested in copper or iron or something like that. That might be a slightly better bluff. 
Well, you know what they say, the more intricate and complex the lie, the more believable it becomes. Uh, that's certainly what I've read. So, <laughs> I, as I'm approaching the desk, I'm also looking around this grand hallway for obvious modes of entry and exit. I'm going to be doing this in every room I occupy. I'm not just here to pretend that I am some merchant looking for a permit. Uh, I am looking for the best ways to break into this place. Uh, so how would I evaluate this room? Roll a perception check. No modifiers. That's another good roll. I get a 5 out of 42. Obviously there are two main doors. You just come through one, and there's another one literally to the right of that door. There are also the windows. Again, they are exactly the same as they would be on the upper floors, but you do notice there are some at the back. If you wanted to break in down here, that might be an option, although of course you would then need to get around this floor. Still, it might mean you don't actually need to do so much climbing. So the back windows currently appear the, the best method of egress. I will approach the desk. Excuse me, uh, mother. Uh... Y yes my dear hello uh, what business do you have do you have an appointment no appointment no uh, but i am here on guild business regarding the transit of ores to and fro the gray mountains oh wonderful a, a guild business which, which guild well i happen and i will say this because it will make the lie easier for me to stomach and and carry off i myself am a member of the physicians guild uh, but i am working in party with with the miners and 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 other mercantile interests oh fascinating strange though uh, wouldn't herr steinhager be aware of that if it's mercantile well and i lean on the desk trying to be charming you know what uh, the miners and those rough-and-tumble types are like. We all come here to the beautiful town of Bogenhafen uh, to do business, and, as I say, you know what these types are like. They see the Schaffenfest is on, they get pulled into this inn, that tavern, that brothel, that dueling ground, and before I know it, I'm the one who's left carrying the paperwork and having to conduct business on behalf of the rest of the guild. It's... It's our curse, is it not? I say, trying to relate to this woman in a we-need-to-stick-together kind of a way. The woman blinks an awful lot, perhaps slightly confused by what you're saying, and says... Well, okay. Well, if you haven't got an appointment, I will need to track. Which uh, I, I assume it was a uh, Herr Stein Hager and not his brother. Yes, you wanted to speak to. Yes. Well, I was given the name Stein Hager, and I assume both of them have that name. So it would be whoever was. Uh, I believe I was told that the office was on the floor above this one. Well. Yes, that's where the main office is of Mr. Hester. Ah, so, so both are situated there? Indeed, of course. The main offices are on the uh, upper floor. These are the clerk offices. I must apologise and, uh, and beg your forgiveness for Sigmar's sake. Uh, you, you see, I am new to Bogenhafen. And so I, all I was told was uh, to see Herr Steinhager, and I had no idea that there were two of them. Oh, well, yes, of course, his brother, and his son as well. Three Herr Steinhagers. <laughs> yes, it's a whole family. Uh, you might not know, but they're one of the most important families in the city of Bogenhafen. Oh, I am aware. I am aware of their import as a, as a family. Do not get me wrong, uh, Marba. Uh, but you see, I, I am less aware of the finer details of each individual member. She just nods and steps up and walks away. You notice as she walks away and heads upstairs that you are not alone here. There are a couple of scribes working in the offices to the left and right, and there do appear to be some men inside the building. They don't have the uniform of the watch on, but they do have some levers on. They're watching you very lazily, one of them playing with a club. Oh, so yeah. Physically armed. Are the scribes paying any attention to me or are they hard at work? 
they are hard at work there is nothing suspicious about you so far so just to avoid just for the avoidance of doubt these club wielding men are none of them are wearing purple gloves are they they are not they look like average mercenaries to be fair they look like private security they look like us then ah uh, I, I share a sort of masonic wink uh with them but if i have some priv i don't really have privacy if there are other individuals here but if they are keeping their eyes on me i'm not going to try climbing behind the desk and rifling through the uh, the ladies drawers as it were well it doesn't take long before the lady returns and motions for you to head upstairs if you're very lucky you have five minutes up you go you are most gracious. Thank you. Sigma, bless you for the rest of this day. And all days, I say, as I head on upstairs. You head on upstairs. Once again, you are now on the first floor of this building. Here, there are less doors. There's a big door to the left. Of course, there's a staircase you're coming up. There's some doors to the right. Again, the windows up here are just secure. But to be fair, they are perhaps a little less thicker, you notice. Just as you're coming up the stairs, you hear a bit of commotion. Someone is yelling at someone, saying, Heinrich, if this happens again, I swear by Sigma, I swear by Sigma, Heinrich. Oh, I know, I know. You do worry so much, darling brother. Don't you, darling, get the hell out of my office. And a man emerges from the door on the left. This man is very tall, very gangly, Although, you notice, he still has quite a bit of a porch to him, despite this. He is wearing some very nice clothing. He has a very nice purple hat. And he quickly descends to the right, sort of just giving you a bit of a look for a second before clicking his teeth and descending to an office to the right. I will try and get something out of this man. And, go and sort of tut, sigh, and say, Brothers, eh? Who would have them? Hmm. Indeed. Life would certainly be simpler, wouldn't it? Oh, you're telling me, I say. And I try and engage him. Or is he just walking by and trying to be polite? He was trying to be polite. If you step in his way, he will raise an eyebrow. And... I'm not going to step in. I'm not going to block his path. But I will try carrying on talking. Not insistently. But to see whether he wants to moan a bit more and so i'll say you know i, I have a brother as well and <laughs> damn his eyes <laughs> it wasn't that long ago he was trying to uh, finagle me out of my parents will uh, I, as i say who would have a brother always with the competition the man gives you a bit of a look, a bit of a smirk, and remarks, Yes, well, don't let me disrupt your business, madam. No, and of that course not. point, someone does call from the left, Come in! Hurry up! Well, looks like the bell has told to me, I say, smiling to the brother. Uh, I'm guessing this would be uh, an, our second Heinrich, then, uh, who was being bellowed at. It's a reasonable assumption to make that this individual is named Heinrich, yes. Heinrich, uh, yes, okay. Well, I will walk on up, heading up into this corridor once again, surveying the my surroundings. Indeed. Meanwhile, Kruger and Heinrich, what are you two doing? You've watched Siegfried enter the building successfully, and she's now vanished from view. It's been about five minutes. She's not coming out. What are you two doing? I believe I have been trying to keep watch just to study what's happening here. See if I can see any kind of pattern in the movements of the guards. Um, if there's anyone else keeping an eye out on, on this building. Is it being studied perhaps by someone else? And do I see what I would identify as, well, the, the criminal element in this town are they anywhere to be seen here they are not 
This is a respectable part of town and nothing suspicious is happening at all other than you glaring at the building. However, as you're pacing around, you do hear someone call out a name. Only it's not your name. Hey! Oh, Mr. Hey, Liberung! Hello, hello again! Liberung, hello! And um, I will look to whoever is saying that. It is the halfling girl from the other day. She's running over to you once again with a large wooden board of news and gossip on her person. Hello, Mr. Lieberung. How are you today, sir? You enjoyed the Shaffin Fest, sir? Oh, yes, I have been enjoying it greatly. Uh, thank you for remembering me. Um, what are the news? What's, what's happening in our fair city? Oh, now, now, Mr. Lieberung. Come now. One cup of peace. Huh, of course. <laughs> well, I mean, it's the second day of the Schaffen Fest. Uh, did you hear there was a massive commotion at the Zookopia? I thought you were going to go. Did you not go in the end? Oh, what happened there? Well, they say that there were all these exciting, you know, things to see. But then one of the exhibits escaped and it ran through the town. And it, it was a goblin with three legs. Three legs? You don't say. I know. Marvels never cease. Um, oh, who's your friend? Hello, sir. Sir, are you interested in the news as well? Maggie is gesturing to you, Heinrich. I, oh, uh, you know, uh, Heinrich, obviously not at all skilled in getting out of conversations with news shilling street urgents, but definitely does not want to pay any money for it. She continues to wave, giving you a big grin. I, I mean, why, is, is there more about the, the goblin? I... Oh, I think so. Yeah, apparently uh, it ran about an awful lot, but the City Watch got it in the end. Where did that happen? I, I sort of uh, ask curiously. I mean, we had heard that it had been caught. Was it? It was in this general area, right? That someone had claimed to have found it. No, oh, no, 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 no. One of the uh, warehouses on the other side of the river. Crushed under a crate. Fitting end. I mean, goblins, I mean, they're not very nice, are they? I mean, it's a shame, you know, it'd be quite fun to see a goblin, but I kind of think that often, you know, they kind of want to, like, murder everyone, don't they? That's what I hear anyway. That's what my mom says. Yes, that that is what people say, indeed. Also, also, sir, be careful on the streets at night, because there's also rumours of a beast roaming the streets. They say a poor, innocent individual uh, near a robbery was found brutally mauled to death. Who would do such a thing? Clearly a beast, but what sort of beast? Yes, it was some kind of robbery gone wrong then, or was it something else? Oh, well, they're not entirely sure. They didn't tell me that. I just know they say, everyone be careful at night. Day, of course, is fine, but at night, make sure to lock those doors. I mean, that's common sense, really, because, you know, there are sadly a couple of thieves in Bogenhafen, aren't there? And that's not very nice. No, no thieving is wrong. And I look to Heinrich. Oh, did you? Yeah, mm. Shaking my head. Oh, thieves! Shake my fist towards the air. <laughs> exactly. Pooey. But you're good people, Mr. Mr. Liberung, and again, of course I remember you. Don't forget a face or a name. That's amazing. That's a real talent. Now, that's the news for now. Oh, it was one other thing. What was it? Uh, oh, it was a bit... She kind of tries to tap her head to remember. Uh, oh, uh, apparently a lot of people... Uh, you remember how I said, like, that the noble son of of noble somewhere, uh, Ustland, he, he, he wasn't very happy. Apparently, they're saying that the elect account is blaming uh, one of the other elect accounts. I don't know why. Seems a bit silly, but apparently he's saying it was all his doing and there's a little bit of a... Everyone's having a bit of an argument over it. Oh. What might that end up affecting? A, a quarrel among elect accounts? Um... Well, I mean, surely it will all get resolved, right? Uh, my mum says, you know, uh, you know, war, but, you know, that's silly. The Emperor wouldn't allow a war between the elect accounts. No, no, that would be a disaster if something like that were to pass. Surely, yes, the Emperor will protect us. Yes, he will. All right, well, I've got to go. Again, don't forget, the Schaffenfest still high swing. Uh, what are you doing out here? Do doing some uh, outside the... Oh, Mr. Stein, Herr Steinhager's place. Oh, business, you know. 
Oh, business, I understand, I understand. My mum always says, don't meddle with other people's business unless it's your business, in which case it's okay to meddle. That's a really good lesson to have learned. Thank you. Well, again, if you need anything, Fairfoot at your service. We'll keep that in mind. Have a good day now. And the young halfling begins to wander off quite happily. Heinrich turning to uh, his good friend now. I, I thought we were we were done with the um, air castor thing. Uh, yes, but uh, I did make sure to introduce myself as such to her. And, uh, well, I guess it would be weirder if I suddenly turned out not to be Castor Liebering. So, I guess if someone asks, if they know that, that it's me, then uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <sighs> Tyler just shrugs. Meanwhile, back in the offices, Siegfried, you walk into a lavish office. There are some very fine pieces of furniture in here, good wooden desks, comfortable fluffy chairs with cushions, big bookcases full of books, portraits on the wall of famous scenes from around the Empire. There is one window. It's a bit smaller than the ones outside, but there is one that seems to lead directly in here, although again, it does have heavy metal shutters. Seated at a table is a very similar man to the man you just met, only in his case he is not tall, he is short. He's also very rotund, but not so much in an unhealthy way, more in an extremely, extremely well-fed way. He has a big, thick beard, and around his neck, once again, you see that necklace. The one that informs you this is a council member of the city. He's also wearing a nice big red hat with two white feathers. He looks at you from the table and says, Right, I'm extremely busy. Five minutes. What do you want? What is your business? Uh, yes, first, first of all, to whom am I speaking? Steinhager, my goodness. Did not teach you lot anything. Frederick, you say? <clears throat> no, no, no. Franz. Franz Steinhager. Franz, you say? Franz Steinhager, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. There's been a terrible mix-up, I say, looking around the room, seeing if this is one that could easily be broken into. Uh, what's the layout? Again, one window on the back of the building. That's it. Other than the door you've just come in. This is situated on the left side of the building, you believe. Uh, how about in terms of cover? Does this office, is it secluded enough from the rest of the building? As in, because this is an office for a very important person, could one feasibly break in from the outside, climb in over the window frame, and not be seen by anyone else in the building? You certainly wouldn't be seen. Whether you were heard or not is a different matter entirely. Is there a lot of clutter and furniture underneath the window? There is indeed. But if you were good... You might be able to get in here at least for a little while. You also notice that the wall facing away from the window, that would be the wall to your left, if the window is to your right, is a very big wall. Again, that's where lots of those bookcases are. Uh, yes, I'm terribly sorry. I think there's been some kind of mix-up. You see, my, uh, my guild was told that uh, Heinrich uh, was, the, was the person in charge these days. Heinrich! Heinrich in charge! Well, that's that's what I understand his people have been telling our people. I see. So there's been a misunderstanding. In that case... No, 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 I'm not, I'm not trying to cause any kind of, uh, any kind of ruckus uh, between, well, in, in business, and I'm doing my best to seem like a stuttering idiot. Uh, but 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 you see, uh, I, I was I was just given, I, as I say, I was given the name of of Heinrich. But of course, uh, we're happy to do um, do business with his younger brother. The man begins to rise from his seat and waddle over to you. There's briefly a bit of a disturbance on his desk. Some papers flutter about a little as he does so, and you'll notice something. Perhaps roll a perception check fortune being spent here I think hmm I'm going to I'll take that second result which is again marginal a 40 out of 42 on that level of success you just about see that symbol again the one of the ram in the circle it's on one of the pieces of paper on his desk 
He quickly, you notice, sees you looking at his desk and then meets it up and then walks in front of you. Okay, well, my intention then, if possible, is to look as intimidated by him as possible and ideally back away and into the desk. I want to... I want him to essentially be stalking me around this desk in an intimidating fashion, bellow at me all you like. That might allow me to grab something from it. Pocket it. I'm at, I'm reasonably good at sleight of hand tricks. But I, I appreciate that requires me leading him on a bit of a dance. It does indeed. You begin trying to sort of back away from him and trying to lead him around the office. So what you're saying is that you're... Whoever you represent is so incompetent. I am the older brother. I am the one who has made this business, not my stupid, dumb-witted fool of a brother. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I was given. I was. Uh, we were truly given to understand. It was, as I say, it was. I, 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 I my understanding is. What that is your business, girl? Out of it! Out of it! We understood your your brother's people had told us that uh, that he he had largely taken over the operation because your his brother had become feeble minded. That that was what they that's the word that reached. Oh, I'm so sorry. I realise that I'm talking about you right now. You bump against the desk. The time has come. Make your sleight of hand check. We're plus ten. All right, we got a thirty out of fifty two. You quickly grab whatever that piece of paper is and manage to pocket it just as he storms in front of the desk and slams his fist down. That's it, enough! Out! Out! Out, you fool! I will not do business with idiots! I am a very busy man! That was your five minutes! Be gone! Be gone! Uh, I'll pass I'll pass your your, uh, your well wishes on to the Grey Mountain Dwarves, I say, as I run. You run out of the office? I'm not intending on running downstairs. I appreciate I haven't finished my reconnaissance yet. There may be something I haven't discovered. I will, in my confusion that I am affecting, I will run the wrong way. Uh, I am trying to get as good a look at this building interior as possible, especially if there's a second staircase heading down. After all, we know, I, while I'm on a... Uh, First floor or second floor, depending on where you are, uh, right now. We know that there's something underneath this building. I didn't see any staircases heading down from the main hall or from the clerk's offices. That doesn't mean there's not something to the rear of the building or accessible via one of these upstairs offices. So in my haste to run around, trying to look as panicked as possible, left and right, you know, where, oh, how did I get up here? This place is a labyrinth. I'm actually looking for one any way down to a cellar that's visible i doubt that it is i have a feeling it's probably behind that big thick wall and bookcase but also for any methods of entering this building that are even more discreet than perhaps his window you do not find what you're looking for you do observe that the wall that bookcase is on it does seem as if you connect that with the stairs there is can't quite see where that goes. Does that go into the main central wall? There could be something there, you think to yourself. Again, there are more offices on this second floor, but most of them are on the bottom floor. You do notice from the right, as you are bumbling around, that that other individual, Heinrich, gives you a bit of a look and starts laughing at your misfortune. He seems to find it very funny. And yes, you then are downstairs, and then you see that secretary coming and being like, um, oh dear, I'm not sure what's happening, but it might be best if you go. Uh, if there's been a mistake in correspondence, maybe bring a, some official stuff with you, and I, next time I'll, 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 I'll... And then you hear a bellowing from upstairs, someone's name. Hilda! Up here at once! We have to have a word about your salary and the riffraff you let it off the street! Oh, oh dear. Uh, sorry, could you, could you go? I'm I'm so sorry, I am so sorry, and I will say, if Heinrich is still standing around, or lounging about, I will say, and I'm so sorry that your brother had cause to call, call you uh, an imbecile, and uh, of lesser blood than he. Uh, I'm sure that that's not true, and I'll make my way to the main door. And you make your way to the main door. Uh, Heinrich and Kruger, you hear... It sounds like someone in the building is yelling very, very loudly and very verbosely. It almost seems to shake the building a little. And then suddenly, out comes Siegfrieda. 
She never fails to disappoint, huh? I look to Heinrich. No, this absolutely checks out. Oh, and one final thing, Sakrida, just as you're exiting, you do look to the left, and you do notice in one of the offices, several large barrels with the initials F.S on them. Very similar to what you saw down below. Mm -hmm. Turning to Kruger, I... Is this the part where we let her run down the street again? I'm just basing it off of last time. I don't know how she works. Uh, yeah, um, I, I don't know. It might be best if we're not seen together, just in case someone's looking after us. Yeah, uh, all right, okay. Do you want to put a coin down how far she makes it? Just kind of peering around the corner. All right, I've got one copper that says she can make it around the corner before whoever's chasing her gives up. You're on. Well, to the disappointment of you, Heinrich, as you all begin to separate off to meet a little further down the road, no one's chasing Siegfrieda, meaning Kruger has won the bet. <sighs> I suppose I should be grateful that was less exciting, but I'm a man of my word. I'll reach into my coin pouch pull out the copper. I'm going to hand it over, but not not look at him. I, I can't face defeat in the eyes like that. Well, as I stop to, to greet both of them, what are you betting on? Um, well, uh, trying to dissemble in my own head whether the bet is appropriate or not. Uh, it, it's just, you know, usually when you go sprinting out, you're being chased, and I was just uh, wagering with, well, with our friend here um, how far you would make it this time. It's great to see you, Siegfriedo. Um, it seems like it went well in there. How far I would make it? Uh, before they gave up. Not before you were captured or killed or anything. By, by, by all, I mean, feeling a little embarrassed at this point, but in a, in a cheeky way. There, there's a bit of friendly rivalry reverence in, in it. Well, Kruger, I'm pleased you didn't think uh, that, well, you thought I would make it. I puff out my chest a little. Uh, but yes, uh, needless to say, uh, in this case, I think I've done the best possible job at reconnoitering the interior of this guild house, family, business, call it what you like. And I've also come away with some some, uh, some kind of letter. I'll pull it out of my uh, pocket as we walk at speed away from there, hopefully. As the three of you walk away, you all look over the letter. It's a very simple one. No address, just a note. It simply says, All goes well. Preparations are ready. When the Schaffenfest comes to an end, it all will finally happen, and our plans will come to fruition. We are all soon going to be very rich indeed, my friend. And is signed, Tegan, with an official sort of flower-like seal. You would know immediately, Sigrida Tegan. Ah, House Tegan. One of the other four merchant houses. Hmm. Again, as well, it has that symbol of the blue ram. I will relay this to my companions. I'm not sure what that tells us, other than there's some kind of politicking and undermining going on. You don't think that they? this is referring to whatever was being summoned um, that, that they're planning something after the Schaffenfest could could that be I mean could the two be connected somehow I mean it could be that it could be anything uh, but the the fact of the matter is we know that that creature based on Heinrich's fantastic navigation shoot him another look that they that something was being summoned underneath this house that, that cannot be a coincidence Mm. No, you're right. But how is one supposed to distinguish between the chaos kind of evil that Merchant gets up to and the ordinary banal kind of evil that Merchants get up to? Well, I might, of course, a fracture in this family anyway, or uh, widen an existing one just based on my usual charm and grace. Heinrich <laughs> raises a single eyebrow. But the good news is I was able to survey certain windows, corridors, rooms, and so on, if we feel it is still prudent to break in. And in my view, the most discreet method of entry, if we can get to 
the first floor rather than the ground floor uh, is and I will point out Franz's office while it will require climbing from outside which does of course draw a certain amount more attention than breaking in at the ground level that office is reasonably secluded from the other offices and sight of any patrolling guards and so forth because that is the office of the most important man in the family what's more there was a wall in that office that behind a layer of bookcases and shelves that and i'm no architect but it felt to me like if i were to hide a hidden staircase it would be in the office of the most important man in the family not least we also have this letter tying him to some kind of conspiracy uh, so perhaps it is his agenda and his alone maybe he doesn't speak for his entire family after all he was feuding with his brother you could probably hear them shouting at each other from outside or at least him shouting at his brother Heinrich interestingly enough though though I have to say our Heinrich despite his faults is considerably more charming oh well thank you I imagine you could carry off a purple hat a little better too well yeah. mm, mm, purple I don't know that's a pricey color. But uh, anyway. So we... It seems like we find ourselves in a familiar position where we know just enough to know that we need to get ourselves in trouble to know a little more. Hmm. Indeed. But thanks to Siegfried's reconnoitering, we know which window to enter through. And that should mean that the risks can be kept to, well, whatever minimum we can manage here. But um, I think we can do this. We just have to wait until nightfall, and then we will make our move. I mean this in the nicest way possible, but you are the expert on breaking and entering. It's at this moment, as you're thinking things over, that you notice a young man wearing a little leather cap, carrying a satchel, running down the street, and he's looking about, and he seems to notice you and says, Oh, oh yes, my... My, my, my good sirs, my, my good sirs, yes, yes, hello, hello? Uh, uh, hello? Uh, yes, hello, uh, do I have the pleasure of, uh, uh, Mr., uh, um, uh, Siegfrieda, uh, Kruger, and, uh, Heinrich? Yes? Oh, wonderful, good, okay, yes, you're summoned to the town hall at once, sirs. Oh, um, who might it be that's calling upon us? No, uh, the councillor. With regard to the, the matter, the, the legal matter, I, I don't think we're supposed to discuss it on the street. Uh, I've just been sent to find you. Of course. Of course. Well, um, I do suppose we have some time now, don't we? Until, well, our uh, booking. Yes, r r right. Well, anyway, yes, at, at once, uh, ideally. Uh, you don't want to keep uh, the councillors waiting. Uh, anyway, my job is done. Thank you, sirs. Thank you. And he runs off, clearly a messenger of some sort. Looking between my colleagues, is this bad? Is it? And I look to Siegfrieda. Well, it was only a matter of time before we were called to account for what we have witnessed. So, I suggest we just tell the truth. Uh, though, do excuse if I wear a veil. The That Franz uh, fellow... Uh, that was uh, booming at me is also a council member and if sh he should be called in at short notice he may question what my I'm doing there following our recent meeting so what will the three of you do? again you're right Kruger you've got six hours till actual dusk plenty of time so what are you going to do? we have been summoned I suppose we do have to respond to that and Perhaps um, if Siegfried doesn't want to get compromised here, then perhaps myself and Heinrich can be the main ones um, taking care of this. Yes, but I, I suppose we do have to go there. We can't very well keep them waiting. That might cause other issues. Mm -hmm. In that case, the three of you will begin making your way to the center of the town, to that very fancy town hall building that Siegfried has been to before as the day goes on and the Schaffenfest continues.
You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we play the legendary campaign The Enemy Within for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition, published by Cubicle 7. In this first part of the series, we are tackling Book 1, Enemy in Shadows. Joining us as players in this series are none other than Aaron Hammonds from Queen's Court Games and our dear friend Matthew Dawkins. The music was made by Flowers for Body Snatchers, Word Clock, Metatron Omega, Agersonus, Apocryphus, Halgrath, and Northumbria, featuring a number of collaborations with other artists, and was used with permission from their label, Cryochamber. Check out their website at cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for some moody dark ambient. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Hoyshobert, Nastasha Rollerson, Simon Cooper, David, Julia, Camilla, Bob Lange, Julian, Cameron, Xavier, and Anton for their generous support. And we would of course also like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, the show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cult Divinity Lost and Coriolis there, as well as get early and raw access to all of our recordings. You can also hear your name read on the show as the Champion of the Red Moon, as well as play Cult with us. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. Thank you again for listening, and remember, Skaven are definitely not real. <laughs>